So, um, ladies and gentlemen, since I have a graphing calculator, I was able to graph this. Okay. Um, now, there's a couple things I want you guys to understand. First of all, these are my zeros. They are also my x-intercepts. Does everybody agree with me? Yes? OK. If you are given the zeros or the x-intercepts, you can find all of the zeros and the x-intercepts by using synthetic division. What you're going to basically do, rather than using long division, which works, but it's much easier to do synthetic division. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to choose one of my zeros, and I'm going to place the zero right here. So those are going to be your zeros, or you're just going to, that's going to be your zero. And then up here is going to be your coefficients. If you guys remember in the long division, there was a couple problems where you didn't have place values for some of those, right? And I said use like 0x squared or 0. When doing synthetic division, you have to have include your place values. Fortunately for us, though, we can go from 3 all the way down to 0. So we're good. We have every place value covered. So we don't need to include any. But all you're going to do is take the coefficients 5, negative 12, negative 23, and 42. Okay. So now, basically, the process for the algorithm for synthetic division is you bring down the first number, and that's kind of like your freebie. Then you multiply on the diagonal. 5 times 3 is 15. Does everybody see what I did? Brought down the 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Add vertical, multiply diagonal. Negative 12 plus 15 is? 3. Add vertical, multiply diagonal. 3 times 3 is 9, negative 14. Right? Negative 14 times 3 is going to be negative 42. Add vertical, you get 0. OK? Now we need to write this as our polynomial. So the last value is always your remainder. Then it's basically x to the 0, x to the first, x squared. Now in reality, guys, do we really write x to 0? No, we just so call that like our constant, right? So in reality, we have 5x squared plus 3x minus 14. So what that means is that's a fa that is a factor. <coughs> So going back to this format, I could say 5x squared plus 3x minus 14. Well, this times what gives you my poly original polynomial? It's not 3, though. What, if this is the 0, what is the factor? x minus 3. Remember how we did that writing the equation, right? kind of going backwards? Yes, x minus 3. That gives you f of x. Now, we talked about how to solve, find the zeros in factored form. You basically do this. You use zero product property, right? Let's write it the other way. Could we do zero product property from here? Yes. Can you factor this? Yeah, I mean, technically you could, right? If it's not factorable, you could use quadratic formula, right? And then easily, this one, zero product property is easy, right? So you can obviously do it that way. Also, though, if you're given another zero or you know what another zero is, Rather than fact, trying to factor this or use quadratic formula, we can do the whole process again. So now I'm going to take my other 0, which was negative 2. And now I'm going to use the coefficients of my quotient of the first. So I'll do 5, 3, and negative 14. So again, I'll bring down 5. And again, there's nothing wrong with trying to factor this. If you know how to factor that or you know what the factor form is, boom, factor it so you can solve it. Or if you like quadratic formula, do the quadratic formula. Bring down the 5. 5 times negative 2 is? Negative 10. Huh? Sorry? Where'd you get negative 2 from? It's the other 0. If, now, for instance, let's say I didn't, you only had 3, right? 
you would have to factor this or use quadratic formula to find the other two zeros. Okay? But since I gave that to you, or I had a graphing calculator, I know those are my two zeros, so I could do this application twice. If you didn't have a graphic calculator and you only knew what one zero was, you'd have to factor that or use quadratic formula. So 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 3 plus negative 10 is negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. 0. So in reality, this gives you remainder x0, x to the first. So in reality, ladies and gentlemen, this can be factored down into x minus 2, oh, sorry, x plus 2 times 5x minus 7 times x minus 3. Does everybody see where I got 5x minus 7 and x plus 2? No? Yes? No? Yes? No. No. OK. If x minus 2 is a 0, x plus 2 is a factor. Right? Because remember what we do with our zeros? We set our zeros, we set our zeros equal to 0. And that's your factor. So if x, my, x equals negative 2 is a, is a 0, then x plus 2 is the factor. Right? Remember writing the equation of the polynomial. It was in your last homework. That's what we talked about. Then we, know, we did the same thing for negative 3. Well, when I divided this, I'm left with the 5. This is 5x minus 7. That's the quotient. So therefore, that's my other factor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, can I find all the zeros? Yeah, well, we already know x is equal to negative 2. We already know x is equal to negative 3 or positive 3. And now we now know that x is equal to 7 fifths. So you could just write it as a solution set of negative 2, 3, 7 fifths. And those are your three zeros. And do we have three zeros? Yeah, we just didn't know what that one was. All right? And I can show you guys also on your calculator how to check your answer. If you guys want to plug that in, I'll be more than happy to show you.